When you first start working with an evaluation board, like the launch pad, you want to do something simple, like make the LED blink. That implies you understand how to use the development tool, how to initialize the microcontroller and its clocks, and how to use the input-output pins. Chapter 3 and its lab will wrap all that together. TiVaWare for C-Series is a license and royalty-free set of code for TI Cortex-M devices. It includes the peripheral driver library, USB stacks, Ethernet stacks, graphics library, sensor library, extensive examples, and some additional features. The libraries are available as both object and source code. The peripheral driver library is a high-level API interface to the complete peripheral set. The source code also demonstrates good programming practices should you need to program the registers directly. The peripheral driver library is programmed into the on-chip ROM of all Tiva C-Series devices. Tiva C-Series devices are USB device and embedded host compliant. Device, host, on-the-go, and Windows side examples are available. TI has a free vendor ID, product ID, or vid PID sharing program should you wish to use it. Ethernet is supported with lightweight IP, and MicroIP open source stacks. Both stacks have been modified to support the IEEE 1588 Precision Time Protocol. The graphics library includes primitives for drawing shapes, text, and images on the screen, and widgets to tie touchscreen buttons to in-program actions. The library has 153 fonts plus Asian and Cyrillic support. Also included are graphics utility tools for converting files and making customized button graphics. The sensor library includes drivers for I2C and the sensors that you'll find on the Sensor Hub booster pack. Examples and a set of common routines for sensor operation are also included. In the extras category, we have the Simplicity Wireless Protocol, IQ Math Examples, Bootloaders, and additional Windows side examples. There are two in-system programming options for you provided through TiVaWare. The Tiva Serial Flash Loader is a short piece of code that allows programming of the flash without the need for a debugger like Code Composer Studio. All Tiva C series microcontrollers ship with this code preloaded in the flash. The loader uses the UART or SSI for communication. It's meant to be a production level, low cost, low touch method of programming the part. The LM Flash programmer can interface with this loader. The bootloader is preloaded in ROM or it can be programmed at the beginning of Flash to act as an application loader. You can also use it as an update mechanism for an application running on a Tiva microcontroller. This technique is called paging. The bootloader can boot through the UART, SSI, I2C, CAN, Ethernet, or USB ports, host or device. Since full source code is provided, the bootloader can be completely customized by the customer. There are four fundamental clock sources on Tiva C-Series devices, which offer the developer very flexible choices when clocking the device. The Precision Internal Oscillator is a 16 MHz oscillator, plus or minus 3%. No external oscillator or crystal support is required. The main oscillator uses an external single-ended clock source or an external crystal. The precision is limited by that external source. The internal 30 kHz oscillator has an accuracy of plus or minus 50%. This oscillator is intended for use during deep sleep, power saving modes, when the actual clock speed is irrelevant to the function of the code. Lastly is the hibernation module clock source, which requires an external clock crystal. The clock provides the system with a real-time clock source. The system clock, or the CPU clock, can be driven by any of the fundamental clocks. The internal 16 MHz oscillator, the main oscillator, the internal 30 kilohertz oscillator, and the external real-time oscillator. In addition, we have an internal phase lock loop, or PLL, that runs at 400 megahertz. 
No, you can't run the CPU at 400 megahertz. Dividers limit you to 80 megahertz and below. We also have a divider on the internal 16 megahertz oscillator that provides 4 megahertz plus or minus 3%. You have six different clock sources that can drive the CPU. Only the internal 16 megahertz and main oscillators can drive the phase lock loop. This is the Tiva C series clock tree. Its flexible implementation provides you with the different types of clocks you need for low power operation, for low cost operation, and for high precision operation. On the previous slide, we looked at the possible sources for the system clock. If you look at the system clock line on the right of this diagram and follow it back through the multiplexers, you'll find that any of the four fundamental clock sources can drive the system clock. As an example, let's connect a 16 megahertz crystal to the inputs of the main oscillator there on the left. You should bear in mind that there are restrictions on the crystal frequency. Working our way to the right, let's also use the phase lock loop and divide it properly to drive the system clock at 80 megahertz or below. Making all those selections is simplified with the use of a TiVaWare API shown at the bottom of the slide. This single line of code can make all of the choices shown to program the system clock selections. The GPIO is extremely flexible. Any GPIO pin can be an interrupt, edge triggered on rising, falling, or both. It can be level sensitive to high or low values. Any GPIO can directly initiate an ADC sample sequence or a DMA transfer. The toggle rate can be as high as the CPU clock speed on the advanced high performance bus. All inputs are of the GPIO are 5 volt tolerant. As outputs, the drive strength is programmable to be 2, 4, or 8 milliamps. The 8 milliamp setting also allows you to configure the slew rate. GPIO pins have programmable weak pull up, pull down, and open drain modes. The pin states can be retained during hibernation to correctly connect to external circuitry even while the device sleeps. The PinMux utility is a graphical interface that allows the user to easily configure the GPIO. Since the pins on Tiva C-Series devices are heavily multiplexed, this configuration can be somewhat difficult. The utility generates human-readable source and header files that can be included in your project regardless of the IDE that you are using. GPIO address masking is a somewhat unusual technique for programming the GPIO port pins. Each GPIO port has a base address, and if you look in the diagram, GPIO port D has a base address of 40058000. You can write an 8-bit value to the port directly to that base address and all eight pins will be modified, just like has been done to GPIO ports since the earliest microcontrollers. If you want to modify specific bits of that port, you would have to read the value on the port pins, change the specific bits, and then write the value back out to the port. This is called a read, modify, write operation, and it's fraught with issues. For instance, if an interrupt changed a pin state in the middle of this process, your code would write the wrong value to the pin. On the Tiva C series parts, each port has 256 possible addresses covering every possible combination of the port pins. The GPIO port pin write API uses the pin mask and the base address to form the address that allows us to write to the specific pins that we desire. In this case, pins 1, 2, and 5. We can then write or read from these pins only. You should appreciate this is not a software masking trick. This technique is completely implemented in the GPIO hardware. Lab 3 is your first chance to write some real code from a blank page. If you don't understand what a TiVaWare API function call does or what a parameter means, pause the video and look it up in the user's guides. We've provided plenty of explanation in the lab steps, but make sure you take the time to comprehend what's going on 
rather than skipping to the solution. Your hard work will be rewarded.